Grace and peace, everybody. We are wrapping up this series, looking at the resurrection of Moses, trying to look at this in different ways and different aspects to help them build our faith. But uh, you know, as we wrap it up today, we're going to talk about the sin of Moses, part number two, uh, to get a final thought as we close this out. And I believe this will take us actually to the end of the calendar year. So with that said, I want to pray, Father, we need your grace. We want to end strong. We want to end in truth. We want to end in love. So I pray that you speak to our hearts one more time in your name. Amen. You know, in this whole situation of Moses's life, his judgment and his justification and his resurrection, you know, Jesus is the judge. There's no doubt about that. And there's no arguing over that. But when you look at the judge and when you look at how he had to operate in Moses's example in particular, the judge can choose not to give. But the judge also has the power to give more. See, there's this beautiful thing. There's this duality that is not hypocritical. It is not guile. They don't clash, but it actually shows us the whole face of God's love. And that love is it is just, but it is also just good, too. See, love said, no, you sin. You have to go to sleep. That's what happened in Numbers 20, 12, when the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, because you believe me not to sanctify not me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, you shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. That was judgment. That was the prerogative of the Lord. And he followed through on that. And he said, and he did not let them lead the people into the promised land. That was justice. And so sometimes I know how it is when we hear the Lord say that vengeance is mine and we can kind of hear that and get deflated because we think that that vengeance is going to be delayed or it's going to be put to the side because if he did that for me, well, then he's not going to do that for my enemies or he's not going to do that for those who are against us. Well, brothers and sisters, judgment is real. It's biblical and it is true. Yes, the judge can choose not to give as he did in this situation. But look at this. And through Deuteronomy 31 verse 12, he said unto them, I am 120 years old this day. I can do no more go out and come in. Also, the Lord had said unto me, thou shalt not go over this Jordan. Now, this is Moses reaffirming what the judge can choose not to give. And he's saying, look, I'm 120. I'm done. The judge has said, I'm not going over into the promised land with you all. That is true. But there are also greater truths. And the fact of the matter is, is while the judge can choose not to give, he didn't give him that walking over to the promised land. But he said, I'm going to give him something else. I will give him something else. The judge can do that. The judge can take and he can give. Because in Deuteronomy 34, 4, the Lord said unto him, this is the land which I swear unto Abraham and unto Isaac and unto Jacob, saying, I will give it unto thy seed. I have caused thee to see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not go over thither. We see what he gave an alternative for walking in that land. But Moses was not aware of Jude chapter 1, 9. He was not aware that the Lord was going to put him to sleep and then when his time had been served, come back and claim him as his own and take him to glory. Yeah, no need for you to go to the promised land because they're going to make it. I'm going to take them there, but I want you to be with me. I've got something even better than what you may be asking for. The judge can choose not to give because the judge can also choose to give more. 
And that's what he did. Brothers and sisters, sometimes when we face our own uh, judgment, we face the own results of our situation and the consequences of our own sin, we can feel very alone and very dark in that place because we were like, oh, I got us here. I got me here. But you are never alone. And Moses wasn't alone. The Lord marked the place where he went to sleep and he marks the place of where all of his children go to sleep. And in this instance, he gave Moses something even better. And I want to encourage you today. One of the reasons why you want to go to Jesus and confess your sins. You want Jesus to be the one to punish you for your sins, if you will, because nobody can love you. Nobody else can bless you. Nobody else can take a sentence and turn it into sweet salvation. Jesus did that for Moses. He can do it for you and for me. Taking our stuff to him and now allowing him to iron it out, for him to clean it out. He does a much better job than I could ever do. But you got to go to him. Moses had to go to Jesus. I have to go to Jesus and you have to do the very same thing. And when we do, we do it with a hope and an anticipation that yes, you are the judge, but you are also a merciful judge. You are a gracious judge. You are a wise judge and you are my friend. It's good to have a friend in court even better to have a big brother. His name is Jesus. And I pray that we would stay with him and that we would walk with him and never find ourselves where Moses was. But even if we do, to know that there's always grace on the other side of our mistakes. <laughs>